Unmute. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining today. We're so excited. I'm coming to you live from um, Redondo. <laughs> um, I forgot it's my husband's birthday, so <laughs> but hopping on here to support the Collins Alumni Society and, of course, my favorite florist, Linda. Um, I went to school with Linda, so I know her personally, and she's an amazing person inside and out. Um, if you purchased a flower kit from her, half of the proceeds went to the NAACP, which is amazing. Um, and just a little history, she's been doing floors for quite a bit. She's done several of my um, corporate events as well as my best friend's wedding. Um, so I know that they just come out gorgeous. If you're not following her on Instagram, um, it'll definitely liven up your feed with the little fresh flowers um, and her cute little babies. Um, she's, and I just read in her bio that she's even done flowers for Robin Thicke's baby shower and Jim Carrey. So she's a celebrity florist from Collins College and here she is. Um, Hi, thank you everybody for joining and find the kids if you were able to. Okay. So if you were able to buy a kit or just have like flowers or a vase laying around, what you want to do is start by filling it with water. And I know a lot of times um, when you buy flowers, they come with flower food or you hear um, myths about using sugar for your flowers to keep it fresher longer. But to be honest, the best thing to do is always switch out the water um every other day with fresh water fresh cold water to make sure that it just um stays fresh okay so i have the water with me right now and what you want to do uh with the flowers is start to clean the leaves off make sure you clean the leaves all the way down and then if you want foliage you can always have the top part attack intact so that you can use it as foliage too because right now foliage is sometimes as much as flowers okay make sure all the leaves are off and for the greenery that I gave you, I need them a little bit longer. So what you could do is cut little sections off. But sometimes they come in bunches like this. This is like, this is one stem. <laughs> so if you want, you can always cut the sections off. And make sure you always clean the leaves off of these two. Because once the leaves are in water, they'll create bacteria and it'll kill the flowers a lot faster. So make sure all the stems are clean. Great. Yeah. So let me create some music.
And as we go along, let me know if anybody has a question. And I am more than happy to answer. Hi, Marianne. Thank you so much for giving us a drawing to work with. And for of course. <laughs> I wanted to know, should we save certain lengths of the stem, like for like depth or something like that? Yeah. Or? So um, I cut, I left the stems extra long for you, just in case um, you wanted them. We can always, well, depending on the style that you're going for, if you want something a little bit more loose, we could um, leave the stems a little bit longer and it's always good to, we can always trim it to whatever position or whatever you want, whatever position you want the flowers. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Linda, where did you get the flowers um, that you provided today? All the flowers were bought um, in downtown at the flower market. Mm -hmm. And do you have any recommendation for, um, for us if we're not able to get to a place like downtown or flower market even like a grocery store somewhere kind of local yeah. for people yes um so the best flowers i find um trader joe's has the best variety and um they get their flowers in i think every uh, morning so i would say trader joe's is the best and most reasonable uh, reasonably priced cool. supermarket mm -hmm. Or if, um, if that is not feasible, because I know sometimes uh, there's a long line at Trader Joe's, uh, you could even do Costco or Wands is a good alternative too. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Linda, what yeah. is um, this flower? Those are Lysianthus. They're so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> and it lasts a long time too. Good, good to know. <laughs> when everybody's done cleaning their flowers and leaves, give me a thumbs up so I know to start the next step. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm going to start slowly first. So for your vase, all the time you want to start with greenery so that you could, it's easy to kind of like create a grid. So it's easy to put the main flowers like roses or other flowers that you want to be displayed. Um, for this arrangement, I want dahlias to be the main attraction. So what I'm going to do right now is layer greenery into the vase so that it creates a nice grid for the flowers to rest on. I like the arrangements to be a little bit more loose. So I'm going to um, leave some of the greenery a little bit longer on the sides. Let me see if I can position.
use as much greens as you can to create a lot of depth for the arrangement. Okay, so I think I greened enough for this arrangement. Next, we're going to use these filler flowers to fill in the holes. For the filler flowers, you can always cut them a little bit shorter. I think that also gives it, gives the arrangement a nice cushion. One stem is pretty long and has a lot of blooms. So what I like to do is cut them a little bit shorter. Always make sure you fill in the middle part too. And for a lot of my arrangements, I like to do two flowers that are the primary darts. So I'm gonna add roses. Okay, so for the bigger blooms like the dahlias, I like to make them a little bit shorter because the heads are pretty heavy. So I use the secondary flowers kind of like as a cushion for it, like that. And then I don't know about you guys, but I love carnations. And they actually come in a rainbow of colors. And actually sometimes they are about the same price as roses. So I'm gonna add some carnations as a secondary flower for this arrangement. Dahlia's here. Okay. 
I have gray roses right here that I'm going to use as the secondary flower and kind of cushion it inside. Let's get another C. Hi, Linda. I have a really quick question for you. Hi, what Ellie. rose is this one? It's like a lavender looking rose. It's, yeah, it's a little blushy lavender. They're called um, quicksand. So pretty. That's like the number two, sometimes the most requested color I use for wedding. Oh, wow. Okay. Thank you. And, and those roses, actually, we have to put in an order at least two weeks in advance. Otherwise, oh, wow. it's really hard to find. I have some more, some of the Lysianthus that Marianne liked. It looks good. <laughs> Linda, you said that you used like the baby roses for more of like cushion. Yes. Okay, so do those, are they better in the center or on the edge? Uh, it doesn't matter where you want them. Um, just base it off the color that you want to go for. So if you want to say highlight um, a flower, like for this one, I wanted to highlight the dahlia. So I just put it closer to the dahlia. Mm -hmm. Make sure you use the bigger balloons like roses um, or the peonies that I uh, included. Make sure that they are a little bit shorter so that you could put them in um, in the middle so that it creates some type of depth for the arrangement.
keep it down. Hey, Linda. Oops. Hi. So I have to tell you, when we brought the flowers home, Ben unwrapped them and he put them in one of our large vases. And I thought they were perfect then. I said, <laughs> we're not cutting these flowers. They're too nice. I've already <laughs> posted it on Facebook. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, but we did cut them a little bit more. And oh, they're great. beautiful. The flowers are beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I love this time of year because the seasonal flowers that we have available are so beautiful. Linda, I'm just going to say, I so appreciate you doing this. It's not going to stop actually hiring you to do this for me. <laughs> I want to do fun, but I'm going to leave it to the professional. <laughs> I know it's a lot of hard work and very just labor intensive. And there's just a lot to clean up after. Okay. <laughs> In case nobody knows, I'm like one of Linda's biggest customers. <laughs> yeah, I want a lot of flowers for her. So that's what she is very talented. Let's see, Nusha. Well, hey, I can't even see you. Once you're done, always step back and look at your arrangement and turn it and make sure that it's the right size that you want. And then make sure that you can see, trim any uh, loose flowers, um, like the secondary flowers or greenery. Make sure you trim that so that the bigger flowers can be seen. Because a lot of times when I started out, I would cover or leave the um, greenery kind of in its place and didn't really look back. So it's always a good idea to step back and look at the arrangement. And what is your most requested flower for weddings? Peonies are the most requested flowers. And it's a shame because they're only available uh, kind of like end of March through uh, mid-June. And then they come back again in November. But peonies are the most requested flowers. I would say about 99% of my bride and grooms want peonies for their wedding. <laughs> And then the most uh, hated flower would be the carnation. <laughs> but I'm trying to change that. <laughs> Do people schedule their weddings around the seasonal flowers ever? Have you ever noticed that? Yes. Uh, I feel like a lot of people do have their weddings in summer because of peonies. So I would say, yes, they schedule it around flowers. What would that be? <laughs> cool. I love all the arrangements. We had a good teacher. <laughs> Thank you. So can you uh, walk us through the steps of like when you, how you um, get yourself organized for a wedding? Like if the wedding is Saturday, mm -hmm. when do you buy? When do you start putting them together? When do you transport them? <laughs> so, uh, if the wedding is this Saturday, I would um, pretty much um, start buying all the, or ordering all the flowers uh, two weeks in advance, uh, just in case I need to get specialty flowers like peonies or things that are not local. A lot of the flowers um, do come from overseas like Holland and uh, the Netherlands. <laughs> so then that's why 
that's why we have to pre-order a lot of the flowers. But um, for Saturday's wedding, I would get all the flowers Wednesday and then start uh, prepping them um, Wednesday, Thursday. And say we have like uh, the vases or containers, we have to prep those too. Uh, for this arrangement, we don't need to um, use any foam or chicken wire because we have so many balloons to create that grid. So then that's why we prefer not to use the Oasis foam. But if we do, we um, prep that Wednesday, Thursday, and then we'll start arranging um, Thursday, uh, Thursday and Friday. And then Saturday is when we go. Saturday morning, we'll go and um, prep ceremony. Some of the arrangements we might have to arrange on site, um, especially um, if they have an arch there that we have to uh, arrange on, then we'll do that first there. And then um, most of the arrangements like the uh, centerpieces um, and all the other ones are for the reception will be just brought to the reception. But other than that, we have to start with the ceremony first. And then sometimes our day doesn't really end until after the wedding, we have to come back, go back and strike everything. So it's a, a really long process. <laughs> it's fun, but it's a lot of work. <laughs> It looks like everybody's pretty much done. I love it. Linda, I completely forgot about this one. Oh, yeah. The so way you could do is add that. Um, take a look at your arrangement and then see if you want to add it. Those um, ivy, I love ivy. So what I um, tend to do is always add it towards the end because they're a little bit more delicate. These greeneries are a little bit hardier. So I use that first to create that grid, but for um, more delicate blooms like that or greenery, I uh, put those at the end. Mm -hmm. I love all the arrangements. <laughs> Linda, I have a technique question for you. Mm -hmm. It looked like you were, instead of just cutting, it looked like you were shaving some of the, the stems at the bottom. So how do you so, do that? What were you doing? What I prefer to do is use a knife. Um, I've been using it since ever since I started doing flowers. I don't really like the shears. So what I do is I use a knife to cut my flowers instead. And I feel like it creates a more perfect cut. And I feel like the flowers last a little longer just in my opinion but I, I do prefer to cut them thank you <laughs> linda is there a part in the stem that you should be cutting like before mm -hmm. that natural like you know like is it before or after like where's the best spot to do that um it's good to cut the stem at a 45 degree angle so with your shears just make sure, well, a lot of people say you should cut the flowers um, underwater so that it lasts longer, but you could just always cut it at an angle. And so what happens to all the flowers after you strike a wedding? Do people take them home or do you have to get rid of them yourself or what? Uh, sometimes um, guests take them home. Uh, sometimes they leave the flowers after the wedding. We like it when the guests take it home. But if not, then we'll just leave it for the hotel staff or the venue staff to take home. Oh, cool. They get reused either way. Yes, uh -huh, exactly. I want to do a wedding where I have the same kind of theme, maybe like an all-white wedding or something, and then I could just reuse. <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> so somebody asked in the chat, if we were good to go to Trader Joe's, how many flowers do we need for one vase? I would say 
three different type of bloom um, bunches would be good just to give it um, kind of a variety and interest. Yeah, I think about three different type of blooms. And then Ali asked, are the flowers treated with any kinds of chemicals or are the scraps okay to put in a compost bin? Um, some of the flowers are treated with chemicals like the um, imported flowers, but I try to use a lot of the um, seasonal and um, kind of like blooms that are local. So it's okay to put it in compost. I wouldn't recommend the, the roses. The roses would be the only ones that are uh, chemically sprayed, but everything else could be composted. Good. Now everybody make sure that you change out the water every two days to keep them fresh. And how long do you think that they'll last the whole thing if we do that? Uh, it could, it should last up to five days. Some of the roses might start to wilt a little bit. And then um, what you could do is cut them, cut the stems of the roses so that it lasts. And Hong asks, how long can you keep the flowers in the fridge? Um, if you could keep them out of the fridge, just because uh, it does uh, tend to freeze or get brown easily. Um, I think there's sections of our fridge that are colder um, than normal. So I wouldn't recommend put them in, uh, putting them in the fridge unless you have, uh, it's pretty empty, then I think it should be okay. But other than that, don't. Um, put them in the fridge, just as long as they're in a cool, uh, shady place out of direct sunlight, it should be good. It should be fine. <laughs> and then a lot of time for my roses, what I like to do, if they're really tight like this, um, always make sure that you take off the guard petals Sometimes they're a little bit brown. Um, the wholesalers and growers leave it on so that when they come to us, uh, when they get to us, we can take them off and then it'll help um, the blooms bloom a little bit faster. And in the event um, uh, for weddings, what I like to do is kind of make them look bigger than what they are. So what I do is turn them, take off the guard petals, turn them upside down and start doing that. And then sometimes they'll get bigger than normal. They'll look like garden roses. If you're, um, if we're looking for a flower that just that lasts really long because we, you know, we're preparing for something that's more than a week away, um, mm -hmm. is there anything that you recommend a certain type that just is lasts longer than norm other ones? Um, depending on the season, but I find that um, <coughs> excuse me, I find that uh, orchids last longer than most flowers. And mm, sorry, and calla lilies and tulips. They seem to last longer than a lot of the other flowers. And I have a question about tulips. Mm -hmm. 
um, we get tulips from Virginia and they're seasonal and they're mm -hmm. beautiful. They're absolutely beautiful. But for I, I don't do well with tulips. Okay. And yeah. I, I've cut them and then they, they <laughs> like they're really tall and then mm -hmm. they droop. They're like they're all sad. So what should I do? So what you could do is, so for tulips, they continue to grow even though you cut them. <coughs> so make sure you cut them and then place a penny in the vase and the penny will help it stay upright. Mm -hmm. I have heard that too. Why a penny? Is there like a scientific thing that goes on with it? Um, the copper? Or I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I think it's uh, oxidation from um, the minerals. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, BJ. <laughs> And Adam asks, from your own personal opinion, do you prefer to make arrangements with a more greenery heavy style or a more floral style? Um, I would say a more floral style. I think in the past I um, love to do a more greenery based arrangement, but I feel with flowers there are just so many different kinds that when you use it, um, I feel like those are a little bit easier to showcase. <laughs> Nisha, I think your cat wants to eat it. <laughs> Somebody that's interested in the flowers. She loves smelling flowers, um, so she just shoves her face in them, but my other cat will chew on them. So I have to oh, chew really? <laughs> Thank you, grab her. Everybody Looks like make, make sure to take pictures of the of your arrangements for us and post them on social media. Yes, tag me please so that I could repost it. It's my first Zoom class, so I'm really excited. And Hong asks, I like sunflowers, but they seem hard to keep them fresh in the house. Do you have any tips or they just have to be put outside anyway? Um <clears throat> what I typically do is um if you have access to it or if you could buy it, I use, um, what do you call it, a wire to wire the head so that it doesn't uh, droop. Because I know they tend to droop. Um, and also, <laughs> and also um, just make sure that you change out the water and then cut the stems a few inches so that they have a little bit longer life span. You're welcome. So um, do you typically do just one wedding a weekend? Because it would be hard to do more than one, wouldn't it? Or um, It was. Um, it is hard to do more than one wedding. Um, I remember when I was still uh, in school, I would do, uh, there was one weekend where I had five weddings, a weekend plus um, class uh, while doing the series. So that was a little bit hard, but I, I had a team and then um, most of the weddings were on each day. Like it was a Friday wedding, Saturday and Sunday. And some of them were morning weddings and um, the others were evening weddings. So it was a little bit easier when they were spaced out that way. But after having kids and just, yeah, just having kids, I just slowed down. <laughs> no more, no more multiple weddings. <laughs> uh, so I like to buy vases um, in downtown. I feel like there is a lot of varieties um, out there, um, but if I can't get to downtown, um, I like to go to Michael's or even a uh, Walmart for the vases. What was the other question? 
And do you have any tips to become more familiar with the different types of flowers? Um, I would say just buy the flowers um, that you want to familiarize yourself with. Um, buy them and then start arranging with them. Um, experiment with them. Um, what I did uh, when I started out uh, in the business, I would go to um, downtown just to buy flowers every week. Um, Saturdays are when uh, the flowers are typically on sale because a lot of times the wholesale places are closed on Sundays. So they just want to get rid of their inventory on Saturdays. So I would say go Saturday if you want. And I think the flower market is open to the public now for um, for a month already. So if you ever go, and it's free too. They used to charge uh, $2, but it's free now. So I would say take that opportunity and go right now if you could. So um, how does your education from Cal Poly help you run this business? Um, I would say that I kind of was doing the business already um, while going to Cal Poly. So going to uh, Cal Poly and then just doing all of this really helped me with my uh, time management. So I think, yeah going to Collins really helped with uh, time management. I think that's one of the biggest factors for this business. <laughs> How did you get into the whole floral industry in the first place? Um, I really was going to uh, go to New York for culinary school, um, but I had a, um, my dad passed away and then I decided to just stay home and take care of my mom and sister. And then, um, I really was looking um, at Collins just as a backup already, as a second choice. So I just did that and went to Collins and it's the best thing that ever, the best choice. I think if I went to um, New York, I don't think I would have um, fell into the flower. So I'm happy with how everything turned out to be. was a question. Diana, did you get that last question? Oh, that's it. BJ says, and you did so many beautiful flowers for the RKR and the events that we had. <laughs> Thank you. And is the flower, like the flower industry and the stuff that you do, is it, is, do you find that it's more regional, like the specialty or just the profession in general to, because of access to flowers or is it everywhere? Um, <clears throat> I think it's everywhere. Um, I feel like where I'm a little bit, uh, I'm lucky in that sense that um, I'm close to downtown and um, downtown is like the main mecca of all the flower um, wholesalers, but I feel like if you are, you know, a little bit further from it, you can always buy flowers, uh, from the, um, the supermarket. They oftentimes have a good variety. And, um, during the quarantine, I saw that a lot of like Vons and Ralphs actually had the peonies available. So I think it doesn't really matter where you are, as long as there is a market around, I think that should be good. And I love your background, Diana. <laughs> Thank you. Y'all didn't need to see my messy room, my baby running around. <laughs> All right, we have five minutes left. Um, if anybody wants to ask any other last minute questions or say anything, uh, Linda, I don't know if you have any closing or anything. Um, I just wanted to say thank you and um, just pursue your dreams if you, you know, I know it might be hard sometimes or, you know, if you're at a job right now, but you feel like you want to do something, um, but you're scared 
to just do it because honestly, I didn't know what I was going to do after high school, after my dad passed away, but I just did what I loved and I'm so thankful that I did because it led me to, you know, um, the college and then also meeting so many like brides and grooms that are my friends to this day and then just meeting people in general. So do what you love to do and just do it with a passion. Thank you, Linda. Um, I'm going to leave your email in the chat for everyone in case anybody has any questions or wants to contact Linda or yeah. you know, order some flowers for your, your next <laughs> events. <laughs> Go to right. work. We, we, always, we always contact Linda even for Collins College events too. So she does beautiful work. So thank you so much, Linda, for having <laughs> us. Thank you. And please remember to take a picture and tag me just so that I could see all the work and so that I could retag it. Yes. Thank you, everybody. I'm already seeing some photos come in, so they're they're looking great. And I'm gonna send everybody <laughs> everybody who registered whether they were able to jump on or not a recording of this of, of this so that people can learn some afterwards too. So again, thank yeah. you everybody for joining us on a Sunday afternoon, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. So everybody, stay, yeah. stay safe out there and healthy. Bye everybody. Bye. Thank you, Linda. Thank you.